How's it going tonight? My name is Paul Taylor. Uh, tonight we're going to be doing an unboxing video for what, quite frankly, is one of the coolest things I've had the opportunity to buy in a very long time. And it's been a long time coming because for the longest time, you couldn't get this kind of thing commercially. But now you can. Thanks to the Anovos company and a little thing called Lucasfilm Licensing, I now have in my possession a box ready to go, theoretically, of a New Hope Stormtrooper armor. And today, with the help of the magical widget. We're gonna be doing a little unboxing here. We're gonna pull out the components, see what they look like, give you a little feedback on them, decide how we like them, maybe spread them out. And then the second part of this is, and I have to admit to you, I'm super nerd, but I'm not super nerd enough. I'm not actually gonna be wearing this suit. I got a suit small enough so that I couldn't put it on. We're actually gonna build a mannequin with the mannequin that I have stored away. And that might be later in the video or maybe a second part. So. Without further ado, let's take a look at what it looks like. What do you say? Sound good? All right, cool. So as you can see, it comes in one big box. I know that when they first started, they were thinking about doing several boxes. So we're gonna cut the first part of the tape here. But now it's all in one. Supposedly the soft goods are inside as well. We're gonna get all this tape off of here like this. It's pretty exciting stuff, actually. I've uh, been looking forward to this. Anovos is an interesting company. They were kind of like a Kickstarter almost. You, you send the money in, you make the order, and then maybe a couple of years down after they've had enough orders, they go ahead and send it and see that's already a good sign right there. Look at that. All right. We got the packing slip right on top. We'll pull that bad boy off and hold on to that. It's a little sticker. Not sure what that's for. Not really interested, frankly. But right on the top. Oh, see? Look at that. Right on the top. There's the Stormtrooper, what it's supposed to look like. I'm guessing this is, um, oh yeah, there we go. I'm gonna flip this around real quick here when you're done. Really quick, as a side note, gotta give props to my brother, Alan Taylor. He's behind the camera helping us out tonight. <laughs> look at that. Comes with the Imperial Stormtrooper Ensemble officially licensed costume accessory. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're a Star Wars nerd as I have been since 1978 when, and yes, I'm old, I saw the original Star Wars in the, the uh, theaters, You've been waiting for a day like this. So I'm guessing this kind of helps you out, helps you get an idea of how to put it together. Um, says that they're assembled, finished, and ready to wear. You have to understand that one of the other things you could buy from this company was a kit. I don't have the patience, the wherewithal, or the skills, quite frankly, to put a kit together. So I bought the fully ready to go ensemble. So it's gonna look something like that when we're done. All right, we're gonna put that out to the side. Let's keep that right there. What do we got here on the secondary, Al? All right, well, that's just like a little bit of cardboard backing that they've thrown the Star Wars logo on. Looks like you could use that if, uh, you know how those guys do the uh, stop motion Star Wars figure action animation things? Maybe you could use that for a background or something. It's a little harder than the poster was, so uh, I guess that has a multitude of uses possibly. We'll see. Throw that over there as well. All right, let's take a look here. Next component we're getting, another boring piece of cardboard. You know what we do with that. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we don't need that. Okay, so any unboxing, as you can see, it looks like a bunch of parts are in there. I get the distinct impression this is gonna be fairly comprehensive, but I don't know, like most guys, I'm going right for the sweet spot. So you know what I'm gonna pull out first, that's right. Ladies and gentlemen, look at that. <laughs> the Stormtrooper, a New Hope helmet, ready to go, fully painted. It's really lightweight, feels like it's pretty durable. I'll take it out of the plastic. And the first thing, all the plastic's going over here towards the wall too, just so you know. We'll deal with that later. First thing I notice is that it comes with some pads inside so that apparently, oops, sorry about that. So apparently you can uh, adjust the size it comes in. And if you look inside there, you can see the lenses are a, like a semicircle piece apparently. Maybe they're Velcroed on, looks like they're Velcroed on. And there's a little bit of mesh across the mouth to give it that mesh ensemble. So if you'll, we'll do a comparative analysis really quick. I have the, uh, the Stormtrooper helmet that you can get from um, one of the collectible agencies. And I'll, f forgive me, I forgot the name. Plus we're here for a Novos today. We'll do a quick side-by-side -side comparison just in the glass case. You can see the slight differences, uh, but for the most part, the mouth guard is a little bigger here. They've got the, uh, the silver mesh here, and this is bluer, but they're pretty close. Actually, this seems like a pretty good helmet. I think it'll get the job done. So just for the fun of it really quick, we'll, tr we'll do a try on and then we'll move on. So, cause what fun is opening a set of Star Wars Stormtrooper armor unless you try the helmet. 
Oh yeah, I think that's gonna get the job done. What do we think? <laughs> All right. So as with typical, with most of these helmets, you have to kind of put it on sideways like this and then turn it when it gets on your head. So that'll be the king piece of the uh, collection so far. And if you get seasick because uh, Alan's going to town with the camera, then just try to keep up with us. So we're gonna go ahead and take the, uh, the foam inserts that go with that to, and the, they come with pieces of Velcro. We'll just put those underneath there to hold on to that. All right, let's come back to the box. This is packaged pretty well, actually. It looks like it's pretty well organized. Um, there was a section for the helmet wrapped in cardboard. That's very good. Uh, we come over here and it looks like we're already into leg pieces right up top. And each one of these is wrapped in its own piece of plastic, which has been um, kind of heat sealed to the armor, which is a very, very nice thing. And there is some shaping material inside as well. Oh, and see, that's real nice too. Let me see if I can get it so you can see this. They've managed to fix it so that the arm pieces are inside there to help keep the rigidity of the piece. And the arm pieces have that aggregate material on the inside so that they'll hold on to your shirt or uh, whatever you have on underneath the armor, which is pretty cool as well. Pretty good detail. It's really, really lightweight, but pretty strong too. It's holding its uh, shape pretty well. And all of it is uh, Velcroed. So we have one leg piece and the arm piece inside it. We'll take that, we'll put those off to the side. All right, what else do we have in here? And as usual, everybody, you know where the paper goes. That's right. <clears throat> All right, looks like we've got some of the, uh, they did a really good job. This, uh, it's like a light styrofoamy type material to keep things from getting scratched up, which is incredibly important with armor like this, especially when you pay what you paid for this. See, there's more leg pieces and all of them have the suspension Velcro already built in. This is the other side that goes with one side. And this is the side that goes to the side above it. And all of them have the aggregate material inside to kind of hold it in place, but still let it move around a little bit for you. So, and they're all wrapped in this nice plastic as well to keep them from getting scratched. I'm not gonna pull all that off of there just yet. The object of this video is to just get an idea if you buy this suit from a Novos, and frankly, we just checked the website and correct me if I'm wrong, Al, it looks like it might not even be available anymore, which is kind of a, uh, kind of a bummer, but the uh, kit is still available. So you can probably get something close to this if you bought that. So let's keep going. Oh, see, that looks like a, that's most likely a shoulder piece. All right, we'll put these down here. All right, what else we got here? So they've been very, very generous with this padding material, which I think is really important. Love it to death, but now that it's here, don't need it. Okay. Oh, there we go. Anybody who's ever seen Star Wars knows the iconic. There's the back piece right there. Pretty good detail, not scratched up. It's real good, it doesn't bend, it's real good quality plastic. Doesn't want to bend, but it's real lightweight because I think once you get all this stuff on, if it's really heavy, that might be a pain in the butt. And as you can see, it's already got the aggregate material, all the Velcro already on it. Um, it was worth the almost 18 month to two year wait it took to get this. Um, you know, for a while there, you start to lose hope. And I see comments on uh, a Novos' Facebook site, people saying, hey, when do I get my armor? You're making this other stuff. If you look over here, down below, I've got the uh, first order Stormtrooper helmet, ordered that from a Novos and it came within two to three months. So they must have had a different deal with those, with those parts, but this was definitely worth the wait. So there's another iconic piece, back piece. All right, we'll put that down there. All right, let's take a look at what we come up with next. So I'm gonna stick on the left side of the box. Everything you're seeing is coming out of one section of the box. It was kind of divided into three sections. I'm getting the impression that the larger stuff's on the right side. We'll get to that in a second. Once again, what do we do with the paper? That's right. <clears throat> okay. See, now we're getting into, yeah, see, this is some of the back pieces, looks like maybe some of the lower belt pieces, every one of them, good quality snaps on there. Look at that aggregate material. And then, uh, is that what that is? Yeah. And then, uh, some Velcro. So it looks like once you get this on and once you get it put together, it's going to be pretty stable. And like I said, each piece has that heat sealed plastic on it, which is, that's a really cool thing because it prevents it from getting scratched up. You could theoretically build this whole thing or put the whole thing on, looks like, and then peel the plastic off so that your very first use or even your very first build for what we're gonna be using it for, which is building our own Stormtrooper statue, it'll be pristine the first time you see it. So we'll put that down there. <clears throat> All right, underneath that, 
Yeah, see, it's just gonna continue with more, that looks like the smaller your back. Once again, everything's exactly as we've seen so far. This is really, really well done. It's pretty intricate. Obviously not too complicated, but still to the point. What else do we got here? Oh. <laughs> of course, I think that's pretty obvious what that is. I think I'll demonstrate in case you need to know. I'm guessing that goes right about there. This is the erotic portion of the video. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. I, maybe I should have warned you it was gonna be, <laughs> it was gonna be slightly uh, adult natured, but uh, there's the cod piece and the stomach piece. Um, let's pull the plastic down a little bit here. Feels like, uh, yeah, it feels like it's painted on there. Um, it's not rough, it's real smooth. They did a real good job near as I can tell. Uh, I'm obviously no armor um, expert or anything like that, but this plastic's a great help. It helped everything from getting uh, scratched up or ruined and the paint is in good, uh, good shape. So we'll keep going on that, but there's the bottom piece. All right, so we're doing pretty good so far. We've gotten through, uh, as you can see, a pretty good part of the armor. Got the helmet out, the important part, some of the accoutrement that comes with the box. So I think we're gonna continue to, uh, to go ahead and move on. So let's keep uh, heading into uh, deeper and darker territory here. Once again, uh, I gotta give the company props. They were not shy with this packing material. There's stuff in between every piece of armor and it's that really nice stuff that prevents uh, scratches and stuff, but now we don't need it. So we put that over there, it doesn't go very far. And I think this, yeah. That's another iconic piece that anybody who's watched Star Wars once or twice knows. That's gonna be the chest plate. Um, yeah, so that would end up when you do the armor right about there. And once again, it's nice and stiff and it's got the, uh, the pieces and the parts on it um, that are gonna help you hold it together with everything else. The aggregate material, the uh, Velcro. And as you can see, officially made in China, like just about everything else on the planet. But when you're a Star Wars fanatic, you ain't judging, right? Okay, cool. Once again, it's wrapped in that, uh, that heat seal plastic as well. So we'll put that down here with the rest of the armor. Nice and gentle. Okay, so at this point, we've pretty much gone through half the box already, which is a good thing. So as you can see, I'll tip this up a little bit. We got the, the other side. And as I had mentioned earlier, when I was first looking into buying this armor and I kept up with the updates, like I said, it's kind of a, a Kickstarter type campaign. They were deciding how they were gonna send the items to you. Was it gonna be one box? Was it gonna be two boxes? Was it gonna be three boxes? Was the armor gonna come separate and everything like that? With this full set of armor, the under body suit, I guess is the best way to put it. The body sock is what I'd like to call it because I have a wife and sister, so I know these terms apparently is included in here now. So I think we're gonna get into that next here soon. So let's take a look at what we got. First piece. Okay, yeah, that's, that's another fairly iconic piece wrapped in plastic. Okay, now that is something that I'm pretty excited about because I did not even know that was gonna happen. It comes with the blaster holster, which is pretty cool. Um, so you know what that means. Gotta go buy a replica blaster now. The wife's gonna be happy about that when she finds out. So. But uh, this is obviously the belt. Um, it comes with the parts, it looks like, that hang down in front. These little dealies that you see on the Stormtrooper suit, when they put them on that are hanging down. Um, the holster, looks like it's on the left side. Maybe I'm crazy uh, either way. But uh, this is Velcro. It's made of good, strong, soft goods. And uh, Many of you who are watching this video don't know me, but I'll tell you, um, I'm a police lieutenant with a major metropolitan police department, and this material right here, it feels exactly like the same material that they make our bulletproof vest carriers out of. The uh, Kevlar material goes inside, and then the exterior is this. This is good quality stuff. Uh, so far, everything I've seen has been pretty good quality, but this is really impressive to me. And this Velcro is as strong as the stuff that we wear underneath our, our uniforms to keep the vest in place, so that's good stuff. This, um, it's obviously not leather, but it's some sort of uh, leather-like material. I'm no, uh, no goods expert or anything like that, but it's good and stiff, nice and strong. Snap, yeah, that's the surprising part to me. Did not know that it was gonna come with a holster. That right there is pretty cool. So it's already attached. Looks like it's uh, snapped in. If you wanna take it off, ooh, that's bolted in. That's not coming off at all. See that, yeah. It looks like maybe you could use a wrench or something if you wanted to take it off, but that's in there nice and good. So yeah, like I said, the wife's gonna be happy when she finds out that now I gotta buy a holster to go, or excuse me, a, a blaster to go in that holster. And then there's the back part of the belt, looks like, or the, either the front 
I'm gonna have to ascertain that myself. So we'll go ahead and ground that as we like to call it in the military. All right, let's see what we got next here. Packing materials, incredibly adequate. Okay, this says medium and it feels like cloth. So we're gonna go ahead and unwrap this real fast just so we can figure out what it is. But this is that underbody. Sorry about that loud plastic. This is that underbody sock I think I was telling you about. And it's almost wrapped like uh, pretty high thread count sheets. Feels really uh, soft. And then uh, looks like maybe this is tied in a, yeah, look at that, it comes right off. Just as if you bought some sheets for your, uh, well then I got a piece of tape stuck in there that's annoying me. All right, and that, yeah, see, that's what that is. There it is. They include the, uh, the body sock is what I like to call it. Um, that's the undershirt that goes underneath the armor and it's a, a nice sheen, almost like an Under Armour shirt if you're familiar with those are. And then there's, there's the pants that go with it as well. They put those right in the same piece of plastic, wrapped them up nicely. Um, obviously we don't care about wrinkles, that's gonna be underneath the armor, but there you go. You've already got the shirt and the pants in case you don't have something like that that you can put underneath this armor. So we'll put this over here on the table next to the helmet. Okay, we're gonna keep going. So as you can see, once again, the packing material in this thing is awesome. They, they really did a good job of making sure nothing gets damaged. There's nothing worse than spending a huge amount of money on something like this, opening it up and finding it all scratched up or some broken pieces or something like that. And as rigid as this armor is, it'll scratch, I'm betting, or it'll crush if someone sits on it. So they did a good job with this. All right, coming into some interesting pieces here. Let's go with this one. All right, once again. Oh, okay, yeah, so we've already had one of these. There's the second. That's the shoulder piece looks like. And that looks like most likely part of the arm armor as well. Once again, there has been no expense spared for the most part on this heat seal plastic here, as you can see. This shoulder piece uh, does not have any on it. It's a little scuffed up a little bit. I might have to double check, but it doesn't feel like there's that plastic on it. Maybe I'm wrong, I'll have to double check. But if it isn't, you can see it's got a little bit of scuff on it. But nope, I'm wrong. Look at that. It's got that plastic piece, or that plastic uh, on top of it. So I take back everything I just said, beautifully done. Heat wrapped in the plastic, kept everything nice and pristine. So at least on that first try, you're good to go. All right, we'll throw that down there. We're getting a mountain of armor down here. Okay, next piece. Looks like we're gonna get into the legs now. And these are, uh, these are pretty big. And then that's probably gonna wrap it up almost. So they've, they've nested the legs inside each other to, uh, to maximize the amount of usage of space. If you've uh, ever seen a Stormtrooper suit, you recognize these are most likely the thigh pieces. Still can't complain. There's enough of this styrofoam to choke a hippopotamus, frankly. And then uh, still wrapped in this plastic. Some of it's come off a little bit as it got shipped, but for the most part, it looks like they gave it the old college try to cover it up. Uh, and between that and that uh, styrofoam material, it's actually come out okay. And then there's one of the uh, thigh pieces as well. There's the iconic knee piece that you always see on the Stormtroopers as well on one side so we'll add those to the uh to the floor and as you can see you know let's just show you that real quick if you look down inside there you can see the uh, velcro enclosure or the velcros attachments so and snaps so this theoretically should be fairly easy to put together and it's got a, an adjustable velcro section so this is, that'll come off say i want those snaps to be lower or higher put that on there where i think it should be and then it snaps to the piece armor above it which is going to make life a lot easier um, especially since you know there was a limited number of different sizes you could get but there you go there's the legs <clears throat> all righty i'm going to trip over the box here and then of course here we go these are nested inside of each other as well but there's the iconic knee piece that you always see that's obviously the shin on one side and there's that uh I always like to call it the hexagonal shape that goes over one of the knees of the Stormtrooper. And inside, once again, I'll put that down for a second. They've just really gotten almost silly with the packing material. There's just so much packing material in this that uh, I think they did a really good job with that. But the where your calf goes, 
That's obviously Velcro, so you can adjust that slightly. Make sure it stays on there good. That's kind of screen accurate. For those of you who pay really close attention to A New Hope, when the stormtroopers are running their way into the blockade runner at the beginning of the movie, as they're showing from behind them, if you pay close attention to the calves of some of the stormtroopers, the armor separates a little bit. Something I noticed, because I've watched the movie one or two or 11 times, and maybe I've seen that, but so it's kind of actually screen accurate, frankly. There's that aggregate material inside again. Still wrapped in plastic. Now some of the plastic, the heat wrap plastic has come off. I don't think that's catastrophic. I mean, if, if I was just gonna sit here and be nitpicky, I would say something about that. But at, overall, it's, uh, they did a good job of protecting the, the armor and doing a good job of uh, packing it. So I think I've said that plenty of times. Whew, looks like a big pile of plastic right now. Hopefully we'll get that cleaned up. Now inside, Oh, I think, I think I know what these are. So this looks like the top of the gloves, if I'm guessing. Yeah, I don't think that goes on the top of the gloves. Al, what do you think? Probably the top of the gloves? Yeah, that's what I was thinking as well. Um, Cause they've got the little Velcro here. Let me put that down. Got the little Velcro things that look like they go over top of your hand like that. So now we've got one or maybe one or two more things in here. What I'm hoping to see is that maybe they've got the black gloves in there as well that would be super tight if there are gloves in there as well. I see there's one or two more things in there, so maybe we'll get lucky, but that's definitely what those are. This is kind of a, um, well, frankly, I'll be honest with you. For those of you who have old enough and you've been to prom, you remember the old corsages that you put on your date's wrist? That's kind of what that feels like, the, the wrist corsage for the imperial minded set. So there we go. And there's two of those to go on there. So we'll keep those up here with the helmet. All right, and if I'm not mistaken, We'll just check real quick. Okay, two more things in here. <laughs> One of them's fairly anticlimactic. That looks like more. Oh, there we go. Okay, so I was wondering when that was gonna come up. I was starting to get a little worried. So I don't wanna mess this up pulling it out of here, but there we go. So there's another piece of the arm. There's the iconic bottom of the arm for the uh, Stormtrooper armor. Once again, if you can even see, they even put some of that styrofoam material in there because inside was thermal detonator case. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, this goes on your belt on the back. Anybody who knows anything about stormtroopers knows that this is on the back and this is what makes the man right here. So I was a little worried it wasn't in there. There it is. It's got these nice metal clamps. They feel like they're aluminum, but they're really, really stiff, real good quality. Feels like it's really, really attached really well. This doesn't shake or fall apart in any fashion or want to unscrew. And it uh, looks like, yeah, some more of that aggregate plastic that they put on there. I call it aggregate plastic. It's probably not called that, but it's that heat seal stuff. Look at that. They even took the time to put it on that in the middle there to make sure that didn't get scratched up. So that goes, if you'll excuse me for a moment, that goes right there, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Once again, we're getting into the slightly adult version, but forgive me. So we'll add that to that. And then... I already talked about the arm piece. Yeah, that would be the, really the only thing that I would say is probably something that they might want to improve on if I just had to be absolutely objective and nitpicky. And that's that some of this heat seal plastic seems to have worked its way off, but it doesn't seem to have caused any damage. The piece is in really good shape. And I'm not ashamed to say that I paid the money I paid for it because it came to me in good shape. So add that to the floor. And then finally, I think we're going to be happy, ladies and gentlemen. I think we're going to be happy with what we see in here. Because the final piece, you probably can see that in there, but of course we're going to take it out and take a look. I won't talk while I do the plastic. That's right, the gloves. And these are of an entirely different material than the suit was. These are almost like, I hate to say it, rubber dish gloves, frankly, but there's a little bit of, if you look on there, there's a little bit of aggregate material so that if you can hold stuff, it's like it's raised there. Um, but for a lack of a better way to describe it, these are dish gloves. You look inside there, you can see that. It's elastic on the ends here. You slide your hand in there. Oh, of course, this is gonna take me 20 minutes because I'm, someone's watching me do it. There we go. That's actually, that's not bad. They're, uh, they're not sized for my hand because I bought a size too small for me to wear so I wouldn't be tempted to put it on and parade around the neighborhood or anything like that but these uh they're pretty tight I think if your hands were the right size uh, these would feel pretty good they'd be comfortable 
And, uh, but yeah, they're pretty, uh, they're pretty much just rubber gloves with the stormtrooper material on there. And I'll indulge you a little bit here. Let's uh, find the piece that goes with them to give you an idea what they'll look like before we uh, call it a close here. I'll just put that piece on. And I'm guessing, maybe that goes, I'd have to double check. Yeah, there we go. So that piece goes around your thumb and underneath there like that. And it looks like there's the stormtrooper hand with the armor that goes with it. And uh, it looks pretty good. Now, the only thing that would be uh, a pain in the butt about this is I live in Phoenix, Arizona. If I put this glove on, I don't know, now or in the middle of July with all that armor and go trooping down our Central Avenue and say a, a Macy's Day Parade or something like that, this glove's gonna fill up with water because it breathes about as much as 50 leagues under the sea. So something to keep in mind, this is definitely not a warm weather, long-term wear glove, or if so, man, you're gonna have to drink a lot of water. So I'll pull that off. But really, if you stop and look at it, that would appear to be, let's just put that right there, see how really quick, you can already see how damp it gets in there because that doesn't breathe at all, typical rubber gloves. So something to keep in mind. But if you look inside the box, that's what came in there. Everything's nice and empty, nice and compartmentalized. And uh, that would be the entire set of armor. Um, cost uh, just under $2,000 if I remember correctly. Not gonna lie to you, it's been a while because like I said, Anovos, excellent company, but it's kind of like a startup, um, kind of a Kickstarter thing almost, depending on what you're buying. Uh, when you give them the money, um, they take the orders in and then they go through the process of getting the armor, getting it out to you. Some things come faster, some things come slower. Stormtrooper armor, fairly slow. Uh, did that bother me a little bit? Yeah, but at the end of the day, was it worth the wait? You would be, you'd be the judge, I think it was, and uh, I'm pretty happy with it. So at this point, our next step is to grab the mannequin and we're gonna build a Stormtrooper statue such that we can out of this armor. Because if you remember back in the mid 90s, I believe it was um, one of the companies who will remain nameless, actually made a full-size one-to-one ratio Stormtrooper statue, and they were selling them between $2,000 to $3,000 to $4,000, depending on where you saw them. Now to try and find those things, it's six, seven, ten thousand dollars $10,000. I don't have that much money for Stormtrooper stuff, so I'm gonna try to build my own. So that's where we're going with this next. Appreciate you hanging out with me for a few minutes while we looked into this. I hope this was helpful. Hope it gave you an idea of whether or not you wanted to buy one yourself or maybe buy the kit. Uh, and if uh, you were just kind of a passing interest in either the company or the Stormtrooper suit, hopefully this helped you make a decision. Couple of disclaimers. I'm just Paul Taylor, the guy that lives in Phoenix, Arizona. I'm not affiliated with Anovos in any fashion. They're not paying me to do this and they didn't ask me to, but I think it's worth mentioning where I got it from so you can find it. I want to shout out my brother, Alan Taylor, behind the camera, helping me out today, being patient with his older brother. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. So hopefully uh, this was worthwhile and uh, it, it meant something to you. So have fun. Enjoy the Star Wars movies.